We're here with DJ Grothy. He's the president of the James Randi Educational Foundation. How are you doing, DJ? Doing really well. Yeah. Great to be on your uh, video show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so first question, I just, I just want to get a general idea, kind of your background. What makes you so passionate about skepticism and critical thinking? I think that undue credulity hurts people. When you believe nonsense, it harms. Sure. Um, and skepticism is, uh, sort, sort of think of it as intellectual self-defense, intellectual karate. Right. It's the best way to guard yourself from the harm resulting from nonsense belief. Right. As an atheist, as a humanist, I see skepticism as really undergirding all of the other movements and aspirations of reason in America, around the world, mm -hmm. and that uh, if you want to be a good uh, rationalist advancing atheism or humanism or secular moral values or church-state separation or any of that, I love the idea of you uh, foundationally being a skeptic too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, I know Matt Delahunty has spoken to that yeah. uh, quite a few times, uh, most recently at the American Atheist Conference. Right. I have good friends who are humanists that I wouldn't necessarily consider skeptics because they might believe in chakras or auras or oh, something, right. but they share my moral values, right? Yeah. Uh, it, that they don't think they're deriving from God. They're all up in arms about the religious right, which is something I can be sometimes too. Not religious right, but up in arms. <laughs> and uh, uh, so we share a lot, but it, I think the skepticism is foundational. Similarly Absolutely. about some atheists, you know, there are yeah. atheists that I wouldn't necessarily consider skeptics. Oh, they don't well. believe in God, but they, you know, they m might believe in conspiracy theories or they might mm -hmm. believe um, in some alt-med quackery or something. Oh, so sure. skepticism is where it's at for me. Oh yeah, I, I actually used to work with someone. Hmm. Oh, I'm an atheist. Oh, great. Uh, but the government's out to get you. And I'm like, it, oh, exactly, okay, exactly. stop talking. <laughs> I, I was at an atheist convention uh, six months ago maybe nine months ago, whenever, yeah. um, in the Northeast. And I was speaking about skepticism, of course, uh, at the booth where all the organizations are represented, you know, every, everybody has a table. Young chap came up and he said, you know, this is my first event like this. I'm a big atheist. Um, so what's all this about? Oh, you're a skeptic. Okay, so, well, I guess I'm a skeptic too. But, oh, so, so he looked at our check about the million dollar challenge. We offer some educational resources right. about our programs. He looked at that and he said, well, didn't they prove that psychics, I, not the TV psychics, but that psychic powers work like in universities, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, you're the man I want to talk to. Uh, you know, enjoy these resources. Because just because you lack belief in one nonsense, supernatural or paranormal view, sure doesn't mean that it's consistently applied. Yeah. And so I like talking to atheists about skepticism. Oh, absolutely, so do I, because they need to be thinking just oh, All of us, else. yeah, skepticism, uh, you know, uh, something for everybody. It's not just for, you know, old white guys, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, JREF um, actually has a lot of educational materials for, say, elementary schools and, and just above that, like middle school, I think, and, and high school, I High believe. school, too. Um, what ideas are these materials intending to convey? Mm -hmm. what, what's the goal there? So we have uh, currently a suite of eight classroom kits for educators or homeschoolers, parents. Right. Uh, they're all available for free online at randy.org. And these are resources to help educators and parents teach critical thinking, but not in some dry sort of way. Instead, by engaging youngsters in the investigation of weird, interesting, paranormal claims. So one of our kits uh, is entitled, Is ESP Real? It doesn't say, ESP is fake, right? right? Or there's no such thing as ESP. It's an open-ended question. And the resource guides a classroom into conducting their own experiment to test whether or not ESP is real. In the process, they learn um, according to National Science Content Standards and AAAS Science Education Standards, stuff like that, um, methods of science, important things that you want kids to learn in school. They learn uh, in, in that classroom kit, as an example, uh, something about statistics, how to guard against uh, experimental bias, uh, ab about blinding tests, double blinding, um, and uh, and because it's open-ended, and because we let students figure it out for themselves, if there's evidence, evidence to warrant the claim, 
we think we're not sort of uh, telling kids, be quiet, just listen to the authority. Uh, uh, you know, in other words, we're not indoctrinating in sure. some sort of skeptics uh, set of non-beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, we're, I, I think we're trying to teach method through the investigation of paranormal and pseudoscientific claims. Other uh, modules include one on astrology, uh, one on cognitive illusions, optical illusions. There's eight of them out now, and, and uh, we're really happy to see those increasingly in more classrooms. Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, I w we are going to have links for these in the right. either in the in, in the below bar here. And um, anyone can get those available for free also at yeah. randy.org, mm -hmm. but we also have printed uh, copies, so these are kits. Uh, that we send out to educators free for the asset. Yeah, I did see those downstairs um, yeah. here at TAM. So that yeah, was, people, are, great. people are loving those. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's great to see.